Hi, it's Jane here from craftwithjane.co.uk and today I'm bringing you this really cute origami faceted gift box. So I found this particular version, I'm, I'm sure there's lots of these that have been replicated throughout the years, but this particular version I found from an origami site called um, Paper Folds and it just uses some beautiful designer series paper so there's no card involved in this, but I know that they're are definitely versions of this where card has been used um, and I just love this little gift box it's quite cute it's not massive although it is big but it's not the depth of it isn't particularly generous because you've got these folds that go inside um, but I just think it's lovely and I've actually designed this because I've um, ordered for a friend's birthday some really lovely um, handmade um, sort of artisan jewellery from a local business, a small business um, and um, it comes wrapped in some lovely tissue and I just thought oh, I really want a nice little gift box which will be quite flat that I can put this in. And then I um, was scrolling through my uh, origami makes from years gone by and I remembered this box and I thought, oh, I'm gonna replicate this and show you guys how to do it. So the designer series paper that I'm using for this is this paper just here, which is called Lovely in Linen. It's 12 by 12 um, and it is so pretty. It's got some really lovely patterns and the patterns on the reverse are just as beautiful. And I really like the colours. They sort of, um, it, it reminds me of a paper that we had in the annual catalogue last year and it just feels lovely. I love it. Absolutely love this paper. So you can see all the different beautiful patterns and designs there. And I like the, the back of the paper as much as I like the front uh, so yeah so I, I thought this would be ideal because it's got some geom sort of geometric patterns on it so I'm going to use this um, this style and this uh, is the backing area and the reason that I've picked this is because I love the contrast of the two different and the way that this box is folded um, you use it a little bit of the back of the paper here is visible and I just love the um, contrast so I'm going to be doing the same with this contrast just here so I will uh, crack on with the project for you. Okay, so I've cut my designer series paper to 10 by 10 inches. You can cut this to any size you want, 12 by 12, um, 8 by 8, 6 by 6, but I've chosen 10 because that's the size that I require for the jewellery. So I'm going to score this at a quarter, a half and three quarters. That will be two and a half, five, seven and a half, Rotate and do the same. So that is two and a half, five, and seven and a half. Okay, so basically I've scored it now into 16 squares. So I've got four running along this edge, four running along this edge, and that will add up to 16 squares. So this is effectively the folding pattern for the origami box. I know it does look quite complicated, but it, but it isn't particularly. And if you look, I've got my four main squares there, my four main squares there. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do it corner to corner that way and then corner to corner that way. So I will take this. So the thing you want to be most conscious about is the corner edges. So I'm going to almost make a little groove in that corner and that corner so when it comes to folding I should be able to meet those up as equally as I can there we go there we go and then I'm going to you just use my finger to press along the bottom of here and then I'll open it back up and I'm going to rotate it and I'm going to do the same here so I'm going to fold in that corner a tiny bit so I'm just pinching it really so that when I make the fold, paper likes the path of least resistance, a bit like water. It sort of wants to go where there's already a little bit of a fold. So again, I'm going to match this up and then I'm going to come down to that fold and the same just there. There we go. And then I'm going to fold that across like that. So now I have my 16 squares and I've creased it corner to corner. So I'm going to rotate the image for you now and rotate it here um, and I wonder if you can see any better on that side. So now I'm going to see that the corner box there just sits here and I'm going to bring this corner up to this just here 
where that corner meets and it's literally going to fit in there like that and it should bend at the point of where those this outer box is here and here and then I'm going to fold that across and then while I'm here I'm going to rotate this and in this corner box I'm literally going to fold it the other way which is why I've done dashed lines for you there so you can see just here the corner piece of the two where the box folds this side and there so you can just sort of make that shape out I'm going to turn this up to meet that basically and then you can sort of see that folds nicely in there and I'm going to crease that along there and now I'm going to repeat I'm going to rotate and I'm going to repeat that so I'm going to find where that corner point is I'm going to bring this to it hold it just there and then just let this do the work it needs to with the corners like that and again I'm going to turn that over and I'm going to find out where my two folds are that's one and I'm going to fold it like that there we go and that's corner to corner there we go lovely perfect and then I'm going to rotate it again to this one I'm going to find out where that corner piece is which is just here and then I'm going to hold that into place and follow it along there we go and then I'm going to press this down turn it over find out where that belongs so it sort of belongs here and that's that and I believe that that should be about there lovely so that will be like that just fold it up yeah perfect and then my last fold again I'm going to find that corner that it needs to fit into which is just there bring this down and then bring this one down lovely fold it across like that turn it over and bring this piece just in oops like that careful you don't rip it like I just did that's it just like that lovely there we go so that's the basics now I need to basically um, bring certain elements in so that element needs to sit basically like that and I now need to glue that into place and I need to do that along all of these four areas so I'll basically be gluing that into place just there so I'm going to get out my Tombow liquid glue I'm only going to glue along the edge because I'm going to actually be cutting away so I'm gluing just there and I'm going to bring these two together and then I'm going to make sure they're equal like that and I'm going to press them inside uh, I'll use my bone folder for this just to make sure it seals and then I'm going to cut away any excess now you've got a couple of options here you can cut that away or you can glue that to there um, and I think I'm going to glue that to there for now and that way it's out of the way and it creates more space inside the box now you can leave it and you don't need to do this step but I find that doing this step basically stops um, the excessive bulk that you'll have inside the box if you don't either cut it away or um, glue it down so I'll just leave that dry for a second
Right, I'll use my bone folder. Got a bit, I've got a bit overexcited with the glue here, guys, so sorry, apologies. So I'm literally just pressing it down so you can see it's tucked away. So inside, just there and glued down. So if I did the same here, it literally glues together shut like that, and then I'm leaning it to that side and gluing it down. So I'm gluing those two together and then I'm gluing that down there. So it sort of tucks itself out of the way and it just creates a better um, inside to the box. Again, like I said, you can glue those two down like that and you can simply cut away a good portion of this, which would remove the excess from inside the box then. So carry on and do the rest of these. Okay, so the inside of the box is all glued. I'm now gonna bring these corners out and just check everything is folded, which it is, and that creates my cute little gift box. So now I need to bring it together. So I'm gonna use this tiny little um, We Are Memory Keepers punch. So it does a very small little hole, and I'm going to, um, Get a hole punch. So the, the corners that I've glued together, I'm going to take this down no more than about a quarter to half, yeah, about a quarter of an inch down, create a tiny hole where the join is. And this is where I'm going to put my ribbon. Now, I just want to show you, you can see there that this edge isn't meeting up particularly well. So I don't think I've folded this one particularly well, but that doesn't matter. Uh, because you can see they're all really off. Um, so uh, I hope your folding's a bit more accurate than mine. I think for the purposes of the video, I uh, wasn't able to look over the project when I was folding it, and that does make it a bit more awkward, but you'll see it comes together anyway, and it actually still creates a beautiful box. So for this, I'm gonna be using my Simply Elegant trim, and I'm gonna pull out the silver one here. So I'm gonna pop that in this side. I'm going to go opposite. All there. So I'm just going to snip away a little bit of the edge and then just to make a slightly easier version. So I bring these two together and then I twist them and then I'm going to do one going through here. I'm going to find the hole that I've done. There you go. I'll snip this bit off and I'll do the other one just this side and then I can pull it together. And because I've done that little twist, it just seems to bring it together a little bit nicer. And then if I gently pull, That's it. Gently pull it together and I'll tie just a single knot to start with. And then that's it. Nice and tight. And I'll do a nice bow on the top. Just like that. Let's trim off a little bit on there. And it sort of creates a cute little bow uh, with some lovely tails here. But um, because of the nature of the coil in this ribbon. I just think it looks really sweet anyway. So these are the two um, origami faceted gift boxes, which I think are just divine. These are the 10 by 10 versions. I have made two six by six versions here. So this paper is from the Hues of Happiness and I cut it into one 12 by 12 sheet into four pieces and I made four little boxes. This is just two of them and you can see that I've alternated the pattern. So this is the pattern on one side and then this is the pattern on the other side of the same paper and I've just done one 
with this paper on the outside. And then I've done this one with the pa this paper on the inside. And I just think it sort of, they're really cute. You're not gonna fit very much in them because they haven't got much depth. Um, although they've got a flat area there, they don't have a lot of depth. But, you know, if you had a cute little, probably could fit an after eight in there or quite a slim little uh, mint uh, in there, which would be a nice little table favor after a, after a um, evening meal party or dinner, dinner party, something like that. Anyway, these are the two that I've made for this video, and these are both 10 by 10. As I said, you can get the 10 by 10 version, you can do it 12 by 12, 8 by 8, whatever you choose to do. And I just think they make lovely little gift boxes and they just look so interesting. Um, I'm not quite sure which one's my favourite, if I'm honest. I think probably this, the original, might be my favourite. Um, and I quite like the elegant trim with them because it sort of holds them really securely into place. But it's just a bow, so I can just pull on that and it'll just open straight back up, which is lovely. Yeah, it's a nice uh, fit for these. So I do hope you've enjoyed this project. If you do want to follow the links below to my blog, I will make sure I put a picture of this on there to show you exactly how to fold it. So the straight lines are folding it one way and these, these dotted lines here just for these corner pieces to show you to fold it the other way. Um, and it is pretty simple. You just fold it like that one way and you do that on all sides. And then you just fold this one like that going outwards on all four corners. So it is um, not as complicated as it might look on there, but I'll make sure that is on the blog for you to follow. And just uh, watch the video and just pause it at, at points so that you know that you're doing it correctly. And you probably, because you'll be able to look on top of the project, you'll be able to do the folds better than I did for this example for you. But on this one, the folds are really neat and it meets up beautifully. But either way, you can see they look, they both look lovely. So you can't, oh, I think so, sorry. But I think, you know, you can't really tell that I've not folded this one as good. <laughs> so yeah, it's quite a forgiving project, I think. So I do hope that you've enjoyed uh, my project today. If you would like to purchase any of the products, please do follow the links below. Um, I am on my way to a thousand subscribers, guys. Um, so I'm at the halfway point. I would be absolutely over the moon if you would kindly uh, think about subscribing if you do like and comment as well I do always respond to comments um, so yeah that would be really cool if you do want to shop with me please do follow the links below I am quite um, generous in my thank you um, cards and gifts if you have a qualifying order and you use my host code so please uh, do consider shopping with me if you don't already have a stamping up demonstrator and just to remind you that we do have an amazing joining offer so if you did want to join my team you can make contact with me and we'll have a chat or do follow the links below um, and they will uh, lead you straight to my uh, team page where you can join so I'm going to say bye for now guys and happy crafting <laughs>